I come from Delhi uh, today morning, so I, it was raining very heavily in Delhi. So I don't know whether I am the culprit who brought rains to <laughs> Calcutta. Typically, I would assume uh, my geo knowledge is pretty poor, so I would assume the monsoon would be east to north. But all my colleagues are blaming me for bringing the monsoons. So that being said, uh, let me just start with uh, with kind of going through. Uh, in little bit detail uh, around cloud and why cloud is pertinent. During, as during the start of this session, uh, there were some mind number numbers being shared on cloud, trillions of dollars, billions of dollars, this much deployment. So if you if you look at from our standpoint, this cloud market, we see this ecosystem has three major players. What is in our terms, we call the first player to be hyperscalers. These are guys who have, who are basically market leaders in public cloud industry. Uh, these are people like Amazon, uh, Azure, Google, Software. They have really made it big as far as public cloud is concerned. Now, the second player, uh, in our opinion, is the local cloud service providers who have a specific reach, they have relationship with the customers and they are relevant, they have a differentiated solution and they bring the solution across to customers. The third player is largely the private cloud market, which is customers setting up their environment on prem So when you look at these three ecosystem players, and let me just kind of take you back to 2010 or 2011, when really the journey for cloud computing started. And at, during that time, there was, uh, for lack of a better term, very patient and very dramatic comments being shared by uh, both the private cloud players and public cloud players. Uh, I don't know whether you were following that trend or not, but uh, we heard comments uh, from a private cloud player uh, that a bookseller doesn't know how to do IT. I'm sure you would, you would know who they were referring to. And uh, the bookseller said uh, that, look, this from our index three years or four years, uh, there will not be any IT left within the data center. It's all going to be public cloud. And as you reflect back on this, and in today's scenario, you'll see that there are no clear winners. The bookseller is doing fantastic, but it's not that the private IT or private clouds are disappearing. Right? Customers are still buying equipment to host uh, their applications and the customers are still going to public cloud and hosting their applications. So there are no clear winners. The actual clear winner is hybrid cloud. I get into discussions with customers wherein uh, I went, this was last week, and I went to a customer who who talked to me about, he said, the only thing that I want you to talk about is how do I move completely to a public cloud. I don't want to talk about anything else. And the next day I go and meet uh, a startup player who has become really big. It's an e-commerce uh, platform in the country. I'm sure you would have interacted, you would have transacted on, on their platform. I can't name them. And they say, look, I think I have I incubated my business on public cloud and I've reached an inflection point that I think I can manage it cheaper on prem. Talk to me about how do you help me move from public cloud to a private cloud. Two very, very diverse set of discussions. So essentially what uh, industry is coming to a conclusion is that hybrid cloud is the dominant model. There will be set of applications that will be incubated on a, let's say, public cloud. Based on its requirements, those applications and data will need to be moved either to a hyperscaler or a, uh, or a local CSP or to private cloud and vice versa. When you start looking at that kind of a model, which is, which is almost, I, I think the industry overall agrees with this, that hybrid cloud will be the dominant model. When you start examining that, you will realize that data is at the centerpiece of the problem. The reason why data is at the centerpiece of the problem is if you look at all these three uh, ecosystem players, they do not 
work well with each other. There is no interoperability that exists. The kind of stuff that uh, Google has is something uh, hypervisor, the hardware, the so software, the storage and all those things. The components are very different. And as you start looking at how do I move my workloads across from public cloud to private cloud, you fundamentally are dealing with inconsistent data formats, okay? inconsistent security policies. Uh, so, uh, as we say, compute is stateless. Compute is agile. Data has mass. Data has gravity. To give an example, let's say if, a, if, if there is a requirement for a customer of yours to move data from one cloud service provider to another cloud service provider, and let's say the data is one terabyte, versus a customer whose data is 10 terabytes, the amount of effort is going to be much more for a customer who has 10 terabytes of data versus a customer who has 1 terabyte of data. Right? So data is at the centerpiece of the problem. If you think that whatever I've talked about is, is all cases, these are some of the numbers from industry analysts. And this is from uh, an analyst firm called 451 Research. They actually polled customers and this, is, this analysis was done in 2015. Uh, this analysis indicates that 68% of the customers have migrated their workload uh, from hyperscalers to private or service provider clouds. This is another data, uh, AWS data. And the reason I picked AWS is not because I have specific love or hatred towards them, uh, but they are one of the market leaders. And you realize that uh, this data is actually from IDC and it talks about whether the customers have moved their data from AWS to another cloud and what are the top reasons. The top two reasons were, one was price. They got a better deal from someone else and they found it sometimes more economical to host their applications on premise. In fact, I'll go back to the example that I talked about that e retailer and the VP of infrastructure told me as per his analysis, and I don't know how, I didn't get into details of it. He says if any customer is spending more than $10,000 per month on AWS, as per his analysis, it can be done cheaper on prem right? And I asked him if he had that analysis, why did he incubate his entire petabytes of data now on a public cloud provider? He said that was done primarily for agility purpose. When I was building my, my applications, I I always prayed that we grow that big, but I could not have, I mean, at that time invested in a CAPEX-based model of procuring IT equipment and building my applications. I would have never reached the success that I've seen today. But I've reached an inflection point that cost is becoming a constraint for me, and I can manage it, I think I can manage it cheaper on prem So look at the kind of diversity that, that we are getting into, and uh, I think that's the move point. Uh, Again, when, when we are looking at building IT infrastructure for small to medium enterprises, I'm sure they are small to medium today, but I hope they will not be small to medium forever. Right? And when you are creating an IT architecture, when you are looking at cloud, you need to examine all those things uh, and put a right architecture in place. Because again, going back to the day retailer, he says, look, if it takes me a uh, huge amount of downtime because I want to pull pull the data from a hyperscaler to on-prem, I cannot shut down my business. I am an e-retailer. Every minute of downtime causes a business loss to me. Right? How does NetApp help? We actually have a solution which we call as data fabric. Essentially what this solution does is address the in incompatibility of the data that I've just described at a very simplistic level and I promise that I'll keep this discussion within 15 minutes, uh, so that you can only bring me for range and not for delays. Uh, when you, when you, our solution allows, for lack of a better term, cloud interoperability. So our solution will allow you and your customers to migrate applications and data in a very simplistic form by just clicking a mouse across all these three ecosystem players that I've described in my presentation. So think of it. Just by click of a mouse, you get flexibility. Your customers get flexibility to move their data from on-prem to, let's say, AWS or Azure or software, or move it back from Azure, AWS to on-prem, or move from Azure, AWS to a local 
cloud service provider or move from a local cloud service provider to Azure AWS or software. Right? Look at the amount of flexibility that you and your customers will get in ensuring that their data is not locked down to a boundaries of a cloud service provider. And we have seen some completely different examples of it. I, I don't know how many of you know Verizon. Verizon is such a big name. And uh, two months back, they actually decided to shut down their public cloud business. And they sent out an email to all customers, I give you 15 days, take off all your data. Right? Take out all your data, I'm going to shut down this business. Uh, and you have 15 days to take care of all your data. Otherwise, after that, we'll not be responsible. So you need to be prepared for that kind of an exigency. Uh, there was a CFO that I was uh, interacting with, and he made a very beautiful remark, and very pertinent to the subject that I'm talking about. He says, when I look at cloud, I do not look at the entry point. <laughs> if I look at the TCO calculation for cloud or, or the business case, given that cloud allows me to transform from a capex-based model to an opex-based model, uh, if I just look at the entry barrier, uh, that business case is always in favor of a public cloud provider. He said, I look at the exit cost. What will it take for me to move out of that cloud service provider in case there is any eventuality? So I think that's, the, that's possibly the right way to evaluate the business case for cloud and look at how do you ensure that you and your customers have got a solution that doesn't define you to a service provider and you have got agility uh, to move your data and applications between all these three ecosystem players. Uh, so essentially, three strategic imperatives, if I have to name it that way. First one is choice, your capability to move applications and data based on your needs. The second one is control, so that you kind of treat data as a living organism and move it across various tiers of storage delivering various kind of performance, capacity, availability requirements. And the last one is responsiveness, which is making this mobility real time, making this mobility not only a theoretical possibility, but something that can be practically executed. With that, uh, thank you all for a patient listening. Uh, this, is, this is our portfolio, but I'll not bore you with all, all of that. Uh, but essentially, we can cover from a NetApp standpoint, uh, from your storage and data management requirements on-prem to cloud, hyperscalers, public SPs, uh, and give you an end-to-end -end solution for your data mobility. So thanks a lot. If there are any questions, I can, I still have five minutes, I can take some questions or I'll be around after the session uh, to take care. Okay, so uh, I've been asked to take questions after the session. So thank you, thanks a lot.